Here you see every option trade we did last month in August. The red boxes are the two trades we're going to talk about in this video. With one of these trades, I'll show you how to put the option wheel strategy to work for you. I'll do this by sharing with you how we use the option wheel strategy to decrease our out-of-pocket cash over the past two years in Kraft Times so that we now own 400 shares of it at a 67% discount. I'll show you how you can use the option wheel strategy to realize some awesome returns as well. In the other trade in red, I'll show you how you can use butterfly options with a little twist like we did last month in our Netflix position. This will enable you to greatly decrease your risk and improve your potential return. Finally, at the end of this video, I'll show you exactly how much cash we pocketed last month by selling options and collecting dividends as well as the return that we realized. So let's get started. First, let me show you the power of using the option wheel strategy. Here you see every option trade we've made in Kraft Tines over the past two and a half years. As you can see at the top left in the red box, we sold our first put option in this main option trading account in Kraft Tines back in January of 2020. Today is September 5th of 2022. So we're a little over two and a half years into this position in this account. Now notice in the blue rectangle, in the second to last column on the right, labeled net, that sometimes our positions, they're profitable, and sometimes they're not. But overall, most of our positions have been profitable. Now we're on the second page of these trades. They go through the trades we did last month in August at the bottom three lines. And notice at the very bottom of this column, at the purple arrow, that our total out-of-pocket for this position is $4,904.68. Now I switch over to our portfolio tab in our main option trading account. Notice at the two purple arrows that we have 400 shares worth of a covered call position in Kraft Heinz. At the yellow arrow, you see that we've also sold two of the September 16th, $37.5 cash secure put options. Now I'm going back to our spreadsheet and I wanna show you how our version of the wheel strategy works. Notice in the blue rectangles that sometimes individual trades, they will not be profitable. We'll have to close out a position that cost us more to close it out than what we received up front when we sold the option. However, it's all part of a bigger strategy, a bigger plan. You see that quite often individual trades, they do end up being profitable. But going back to our second page here of all of our trades, we see that in the end, this can be a very profitable strategy. We call it our upgraded version of the optional strategy because we don't limit ourselves to just selling cash secure put options in a stock and then waiting for it to be assigned to us. If we see that it's more advantageous for us to roll this cash secure put option out, up, or down, or possibly even close it out early, then that's exactly what we do. If we realize that after running our numbers, that's better for us to let the option be assigned to us and turn it into a covered call, and quite possibly begin collecting those dividends if it's about to go X dividend, then that's also what we do. If we say it's not in our best interest to roll a cash secured put option or a covered call option, then we'll either let the option be assigned or close it out early, and then we'll wait for Kraft Heinz to come back down or up to an area where we believe it's near support and then sell a new cash secured put option in it. Overall, we don't limit ourselves to the basic rules of the option world strategy. Those rules can be quite profitable, but we found that by making adjustments and staying out of a position or entering a position when it's to our advantage, that our overall return is usually even better than what the basic option world strategy produces. Now looking down at the very bottom right corner of this spreadsheet, at the purple arrow, just to the right of where it says that we are out of pocket a total of $4,904.68, for the 400 shares we own, you see that our cost basis in those 400 shares is right at $12.26 per share. As you can now see in the top left corner, Kraft Heinz closed last Friday at $37.31. Also notice now in the red box that it went ex-dividend right at a week and a half ago. So although we haven't received it yet, we're lined up to receive that 40 cent per share dividend that will be paid to us on September 23rd. When we get that dividend, it will push our total out-of-pocket costs down to $11.86 per share. I'm ecstatic to own 400 shares of Kraft Heinz with an out-of-pocket cost of $11.86 per share. So let's run some numbers to see what our dividend yield is on our out-of-pocket cost. Here you see that when we do the math and multiply the 40 cent dividend times the four quarters for each year, if Kraft Heinz doesn't raise its dividend this year, we'll receive $1.60 per share. If you divide it by how much we're currently out of pocket, which at the moment is $12.26 per share, then our dividend yield is just over 13% annualized. Now, I don't know about you, but for not having to do a whole lot of work, I'm very happy to receiving a 13% dividend yield in a company like Kraft Heinz. 
By the way, if you want to become a more profitable stock and option trader, please do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. If you're finding benefit in this video, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. The final trade and tip I want to share with you before we get to how much cash we pocketed last month by selling options, it's a two-part trade that we did in Netflix. In a video I released several months ago entitled Risk-Free Option Trading, Is It Possible?, I spoke about potentially using butterfly options to greatly reduce your risk with the potential of achieving gigantic returns. Last month we saw a stock that we believe fit this potential trade, but we added a little extra twist to it to make it even better. Back on June 25th, about a month before we did this trade that I'm about to describe to you, Netflix made our top five stocks weekly list. It wasn't ranked very high. As you can see here, it was all the way down towards the bottom, but as long as it ranks at least a six out of 10, it's on this list. This list is a list of stocks that each weekend I send out to my patrons, stocks I'm looking to potentially make trades in during the coming week. Netflix remained on that top five weekly list for the next four weeks until finally on July 20th, we did a two part option trade in it. Let me show you what I saw that made me feel comfortable taking a bullish option position in Netflix. On the left, we have the daily chart, and on the right, the weekly chart. Notice where the white arrows are, that this was the day that we entered this position in Netflix. Notice in the left chart that on that day, it successfully, on strong volume, broke out above the green 50 exponential moving average. When it did that, it also pushed to an area that had previously served as resistance for it back in June, which is located around the purple line. Notice down the volume section in the yellow box that there had been tremendous selling pressure in the left side of that box back in May. But on the day we did this trade, as well as the week or so before, buyers had taken over and were in control of the stock's movements. Looking over the right weekly chart, in addition to breaking through that purple line that had served as resistance for it, notice down the volume section in the orange box that over the past several months, the buyers have been showing great strength. Notice at the yellow arrow and line on the right weekly chart that six times over the previous several months, when Netflix declined to around 170, buyers came in with enough strength to give it support. With it now breaking out above previous resistance and knowing that previous resistance, it tends to turn into support, I felt comfortable taking a bullish position in Netflix. Let me first show you the butterfly that we bought and talk you through why I picked the strike price that I did. Here you see the three strike prices that we traded. At the bottom at the white line, you see we bought the third Friday of August, 230 call option. To the left of that, you see that it cost us $4.50 per share. Just above that, at the yellow line, you see that we sold two of the 250 call options. Each one of those sold for $1.56 per share, so we got a total of $3.12 times 100, or $312. At the top purple line, so we bought for our protection the 270 call option with the same expiration day. That option cost us $0.62 cents per share. So at the very top in the white box, so this total position cost us $2 times 100 shares for a cost of $200 plus commission. So all we needed was for Netflix to be at least at $232 around expiration for this to be profitable. On the other hand, if it shot way past our 270 call, it would end up being a worthless position and so we would lose that $2 per share. Let me show you why I picked the 250 strike price. Notice here at the yellow arrow, that's where I had been finding resistance up until the day we did this trade. So there really wasn't any other resistance until it reached the white line, which was a high from back in the day that it had its big gap down in April. That area was my target. I believe that Netflix will mostly go up in price until it got near that high from that day, which was around 250. I knew that would be quite a large move for Netflix to make, but I believe that it was possible, so I felt like we had a decent shot at this being a profitable trade for us. The problem was that if it didn't do what I expected and it shot way above our 270 strike price, or even hung around where it was around 220, we'd lose our $2 per share. And I didn't want that to happen. So here's the additional trade that we did to ensure that we would most likely win no matter what happened with this position. Since we're out of pocket $2 per share, time decay was our enemy. In order to turn time decay into our friend, I decided to also sell a bullish put option credit spread. But I wanted to get that option as far away from its current price and still walk away with an overall net credit for this initial position. So I went back to the chart, saw that Netflix, it actually had three pretty clear levels where it had been finding support. At the purple line around 207, I saw that this was an area that it had just broke through that day and that corresponded with a high from back in June, as well as the green 50 exponential moving average. Just below that at the white arrow around 190, I saw there are also previous waves highs that should again serve as support for it. In the worst case scenario at the line around 170, Netflix had found really strong support four times over the previous several months. 
So ideally, I would love to have that put option below that 170 mark, but we just wouldn't have been paid enough premium to cover our cost. So I ended up doing a bullish put option credit spread by selling the third Friday of August 177.5 put option and buying for protection the 140 put option. For that trade, we put $2.19 per share into our pocket. When we took out the $2 per share that the butterfly cost us, we walked with a net credit of $0.19 cents per share, or $19 minus commission. Now, as long as Netflix remained above $1.77.5 per share by expiration, this was going to be a winning trade. It was really just a matter of how big our win was going to be. Well, fast forward to August 5th, the day that we exited this trade, you see that it had been trading right around $2.26, or just below our long call option. Now, I didn't want to risk this trade declining and missing out on decent profit, so I decided to go ahead and close this entire position out early. After closing out all the options, we ended up walking away with a profit of $313.21. I'm happy with that, but it's not some huge win. But I wanted to point out that this position is actually one that didn't move as much as I thought it might by the time we closed this position out. But this was a trade that the way we structured it, it was highly unlikely that we were going to lose money in this position. Netflix would have to push through several areas of strong support before it reached our short put option. Because of that, we knew we had a very high percentage opportunity to win and if Netflix advanced to write at our 250 strike price, we could have ended up walking with a $20 per share profit. But instead, we ended up walking with a profit of just over $3 per share for something that didn't cost us anything out of pocket up front. We just had to have some margin available to cover the position. One of the reasons I decided to exit this position early is that there were several things going on in the news that made me believe that Netflix, it might go down. However, they didn't end up playing out. As you can see here, by fast forwarding the chart to the expiration date of the options that we had bought and sold, August 19th, we said Netflix, it did actually end up doing exactly what we thought it was going to do. Here you see that it reached our target price of 250 and hung around that area for several days. On expiration day, you see that it closed at 239 and 37 cents. Here you see that the margin requirement for this position was $876.77. So we got a tremendous return on our margin requirement. You see that we were only in this position for 16 days. When you run the return on that margin requirement, it actually equates to a 815% annualized return on margin. This isn't a trade I do very often, but it's probably one that I should use more. But I was happy to walk away with a nice profit on a very low risk position. Butterflies can be powerful to have in your tool bag when it comes to option trading. When you couple that with some of the very far out of the money credit spreads that you can do, we're able to be in a position for no money. And if it goes your way, you can have a huge win. Now let me show you potentially how much an option trader can make. Here's how much we pocketed last month by selling options and collecting dividends in our main option trading account. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, it said because of selling options, we put a net of $20,165 cash into our pocket. In the green box, it said we received $1,038.50 in dividends from the five covered call positions we are in. In the purple box, it said data fees were $32.75. At the bottom of the black box is that we were paid just over $301 in interest for the cash that we have sitting in our account. However, I want to tell you that we actually had a loss in some Apple stock that was assigned to us in the amount of $1,544. So in all, we put a net of $19,813 cash into our pocket in this main option trading account. If you analyze that return, based on the approximately $1 million we had at risk, it equates to right at a 22.2% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about what the return was based on the required margin of $127,022, it equates a 184% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades like the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. In this video, I share with you a unique option strategy in butterflies. I'd like to see how you can use them to generate awesome cash flow return. Check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled Risk-Free Option Trading. Is it possible? Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.